We got to talk about the bada bing, bada boom battle royal. What a job this Tony D and Stacks have. They just sit in the crow's nest and eat Italian food. I can't think of a better job. It's pretty good. So then they had a, a match. It was just, uh, it was quick. Just getting guys out of there as quickly as possible. About five minute battle royal. That's and so it was. I did. I did like what they did a lot here. So it comes down to uh, it comes down to uh, Carrillo. Chase you. Uh, no, Carrillo got tossed, and so he's supposed to be eliminated. But Scripps had eliminated a bunch of dudes, and everyone's brawling on the floor. So the refs, these idiot refs, absolute idiot refs. You have one job in a battle royal. These idiot refs don't see that Carrillo has been eliminated. So he just gets back in the ring, and he uh, he tosses the creeds, and so they win. It was a screw job in a battle royal. So it's Chase U, that was one of the winning teams, against Angel and Umberto, who cheated to get into the final match. So they do this match, and uh, and Brutus ends up running down for revenge, and he uh, he yanks Umberto out of the ring, and then Chase cradles Angel Garza, and he pins him. And these fans, like, I mean, A, they were so happy that Chase U won because they absolutely love Chase U. But not only did Chase U win, but these cheaters got their, they got their own. They got, they got theirs, as they say, and, uh, and were defeated. And this place just went haywire for Chase U winning this match. So they get a tag shot. At Halloween Havoc. It was and very right well before, done. Right before the end, J.C. Jane and Thea Hale came out in full They're cheerleader attire. Yeah, exactly. J.C.'s a I'm cheerleader now. Andre Chase and J.C. Jane, I'm telling you, something's going to happen there. But a five-and-a-half-minute battle royal before the match actually started, and I thought they did a good job building up a couple of matches out of this, too, because it will probably get Creed Brothers and Los Lotharios, obviously. We're getting Chase U and the family, but... Uh, Nima and Price against the Brawling Brutes with Reggie involved there. Brooks and Jensen against maybe Kemp and Gulak and, and maybe Gallus. They didn't have direct uh, impact with Hank and Tank, but you could you know mix something around there. So they did a good job setting up some things, not only the the title match, which is upcoming. And we had the Alexis or Lexis King promo. And essentially the story is that he was only four when his dad died. And so he never knew the guy. He never loved him. He didn't care about him at all. He wanted to step out of his shadow and have a bigger career than his father ever did. Now we had Carmelo coming out for the promo, and they're building up the three-way for the main event. And, man, I got to say, this three-way argument between Dijak with his character, Carmelo, and Baron Corbin was not compelling in any way. And so then Dragunov appeared on the big screen, and he announced it's now a four-way with Trick Williams per Cody. And so Mello is shocked, and Trick comes out, and Mello's just like, he doesn't even know what's going on. This guy, he's just, now he's in his match. And uh, finally, they have a stare down. The heels attack them. That leads to a segment later. We're building up a match with Fallon and Tiffany. Tiffany has not been on TV wrestling for weeks now. So uh, presumably still healing from when she got her head whacked into that metal barricade in that match with uh, with Becky. Then we had the first one. Carmen Petrovich, Petrovich and Jada Parker. And uh, they said that Carmen had 23 years of combat experience, which means she began engaging in combat at four. That's a rough yeah. upbringing. Well, hey, the mom was in the stands. Maybe she's scared of her. They went a thousand miles an hour, and uh, yeah. And Jade is a basketball player, and Carmen is a black belt third degree, and they are both very, very young wrestlers. Carmen won with a version of Carmela's finisher, so she will lose to Lola Vice next week. Choked her out between her thigh and her calf. Yeah, that's that's uh, Carmela's finish. I forget what they call it, but that's her finish. And then we had uh, Natty backstage with Tegan, and that led to Lyra and Tegan. Natty came out to second her, and they're doing this match. And who should appear in the aisle but Chelsea Green and Piper? And so they're, uh, they did the deal where, you know, the two people show up, and before anything had even happened, 
the announcer starts screaming about distractions and interference. And the funny thing was, if you watch this match, yeah, they briefly distracted uh, Tegan, but then Tegan got back into the ring. She continues wrestling. She hit a cradle. Lyra kicked out. And then Lyra, Lyra kicked her and pinned her. So there was, this distraction did not lead to the finish at all. But that's the story they wanted to tell you. Did Tegan's second, which was obviously Natalia, did she even react or move until the brawl at the end of the match? Well, I'll tell After you what, I'll tell you what Natty did, and I did it too. So they did a spot where uh, Lyra is doing the Brian Danielson kicks to the chest, and then she's supposed to, uh, like I don't know who forgot what here, but Tegan thought, okay, this next one I'm supposed to duck. And Lyra, either either she forgot or uh, Tegan, it's like somebody forgot what they were supposed to do here. Because Tegan is expecting to duck and she, she puts her head down and Lyra just freaking throws a kick to the chest and hits her right in the head. And they cut to Natty and Natty, she, now she's biting her finger. She's like scared to death that this, she gets, as soon as Tegan gets hit, she just crumples. And I'm like, oh my God. And Lyra covers her and she kicked out and kept doing the match. But that was one bad mistimed spot right there. Someone could have gotten hurt bad. And then we uh, had the finish. And then uh, they did a promo segment with Lyra and Becky hyping up next week. We had the mellow Trick argument backstage where they both finally agree, no matter what happens, Trick says, we're still Trick Mellow. And they smile and he leaves and then Mellow's not so happy. Gigi spun the wheel. It's lights out next week. So then we have Von Wagner. He's got his head in a, his head is still bandaged. And he's doing physical therapy. And literally the Apparently story going to the same place Adam Cole's getting his ankle worked on. The story is that after getting his head crushed by the steel steps, Von Wagner legit needs to relearn how to walk. They've got him on the gimmick where he's trying to learn how to walk. And then they've got some band and he's supposed to like go like this with the band, but he's too weak. And Mr. Stone is there with him. And Mr. Stone believes that he can get back to 100%. Because Vaughn has almost given up. But Mr. Stone gives him the pep talk. And Vaughn then says, hand me that damn band. He's not going to quit. We had uh, Shotzi beating Kiana. They did the Eddie Guerrero finish. And then Kiana missed a charge. Shotzi hit the senton and pinned her. Shotzi is your host for Halloween Havoc, in case anybody's wondering why she's on the show. Yes. And then Mackenzie, she's trying to interview Oro Minson, Lash Legend, <laughs> and Noam calls on the cell phone, and he's screaming from the hospital. He's begging Jakara, don't go to the light! <laughs> and then he's worried the doctors are going to take her arm! And then Tozawa shows up and tells them to tell Noam he's looking for him. I think Noam's busy, but we'll see. You ever had to yell at anybody to take the arm? Trick Williams was attacked backstage. And this was where Kelly explained, whoever did it definitely did not want to see him challenge Ilya for the NXT title. McKenzie interviewed Dom. And I could not, like, did I miss something? The announcers twice said that Nathan Frazier and Dom had an incident last night. That would be raw. Did they mean to say last week and screwed well, it up twice? Did you check your social media? Did they do something? On I that? have no idea. But uh, Frazier ran in and just beat this dude's ass. They had a great brawl. And no so officials here now. Yeah, it was Nathan Vince Frazier was and Dom are going to be uh, wrestling soon. We had Roxanne and Shotzi having a meeting. Did the uh, setup for the Devil's Playground match. And then uh, Ariana Grace versus Brinley Reese. My new favorite name, Brinley Reese. But apparently she calls herself Bryn. So they do a match, and uh, Grace raked the eyes and won. I, 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 I zoned out during this one. I, I just, just two on one show, I just couldn't do it. What do you think about the gimmick for Ariana Grace? Well, she was legitimately a beauty queen. So, great. Doing things gracefully. She's already got her catchphrase and everything. Yes. Then we had a Braun Breaker promo. This was actually great. So he's doing this promo, 
And Mr. Stone shows up, and he's just furious. And Braun says, why don't you go tell that idiot Vaughn to figure out how to put one foot in front of each other? So Mr. Stone cuts a promo on this guy. He's like, you don't care about anything, do you? I have to go home, and my children, they're always asking me, is Vaughn going to be okay? And I cannot look them in their eyes and lie. And I got to tell them, I don't know if he's going to be okay. Braun, you, you got to pay. And Braun says, well, why don't you do something about it? And Mr. Stone is so mad, he goes, I will! You and me at Halloween Havoc! And then he realizes what he said, but he doesn't back down. And Braun starts to laugh, and he goes, that's a great idea. You better call the hospital, because I'm going to do to you what I did to Braun. This was great. Mr. Stone and Braun Breaker. Probably the return of Vaughn, I would guess. And then uh, the main event, Carmelo Corbett and Dijak. So, I don't know. I don't know who I thought was going to win. But I will say that when Dijak went for Feast Your Eyes and Corbin reversed it in the end of days and then Carmelo came off top with a leg drop and got the pin, I was like, what? We literally just saw this match. And there's no way that Carmelo wants to do this match again after the horrific beating that he took in that match with Thelia. There's but then I want to watch it. It hit me. It hit me. Huh? Trick was supposed to be in this match, mm -hmm. and he was brutally attacked. Mm -hmm. So I will bet that Shawn Michaels rules that this match will actually now be a three-way with Ilya, Carmelo, and Trick, which plays perfectly into the storyline, and uh, I think that's where they're going. They got two yeah. weeks, because this, this is night two, so they got another week to do whatever they're going to do. So I think Absolutely. that's what's, what's going to happen. And, and look, friendly fire... Knocks one of them out, and Ilya gets the pin, and he remains champion, and we got another chapter in the story of Trick and Mellow. Makes sense. You have Max Caster on Wednesday was giving MGF unwelcome physical groping. Daddy Ass was calling himself Mr. Ass for decades now. And then you have the Iron Savages. All these men want to do, in their own words, is eat their opponent's asses. Yeah. Anthony Bones is the straightest guy in this match. Tony Storm also ate ass. What's going on here? Sky Blue has a very... Um, Thick. Thank you. Uh, backside, of course, Tony's the same way. So they had to one-up that somehow. Kira Hogan, well, she fits the bill. Kira is running wild, and Tony cuts her off by eating her ass. This is the kinkiest wrestling show I've seen in a long, long time. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.